PN3. Q. The nurse should assess a client who has a peptic ulcer for signs of bleeding. Which symptom would best indicate this complication? A Molina B. Hematuria C. Hemoptysis D. Echimosis Rationale Molina is blood in the stools, which would occur with bleeding in the gastrointestinal tract due to a peptic ulcer. Answers B, C, and D are not specific to the GI system so are incorrect. Hematuria, blood in the urine, is not indicative of a peptic ulcer. Blood from the lungs can occur as hemoptysis but is not related to this problem, and echimosis indicates bruising. Q. Before administering methotrexate orally to the client with cancer, the nurse should check the AIV site B electrolyte C blood gases D vital signs. Rationale The vital signs should be taken before any chemotherapy agent. If it is in for infusion of chemotherapy, the nurse should check the foresight as well. Answers B and C are incorrect because it is not necessary to check the electrolytes or blood gases. Q. The nurse is discussing meal planning with the mother of a two-year-old toddler. Which of the following statements, if made by the mother, would require a need for further instruction? A. It is okay to give my child white grape juice for breakfast. B. My child can have a grilled cheese sandwich for lunch. Cyrillic letter S. We are going on a trip, and I have bought hot dogs to grill for his lunch. D. For a snack, my child can have ice cream. Rationale The comment of most concern is answer C because hot dogs are commonly the cause of choking in children. There is no reason for concern in the comments and answers A, B, or D. Therefore, these are incorrect. Q. While performing a neurological assessment on a client with a closed head injury, the licensed practical nurse notes a positive Babinski reflex. The nurse should recognize that the client's condition is improving B. Reposition the client and check reflexes again do nothing because the finding is an expected one notify the charge nurse of the finding rationale. A positive Babinski reflex in adults should be reported to the charge nurse because it indicates an abnormal finding. Answer A is incorrect because a positive Babinski sign in the adult is abnormal, therefore it does not indicate that the client's condition is improving. Answer B is incorrect because changing the position will not alter the finding. Answer C is incorrect because a positive Babinski reflex is an expected finding in the infant but not in adults. Q. The nurse is preparing to administer a feeding via a nasogastric tube. The nurse would perform which of the following before initiating the feeding? Assess for tube placement by aspirating stomach content B. Place the patient in a left, lying position C. Administer feeding with 50% H20 concentration D. Ensure that the feeding solution has been warmed in a microwave for two minutes rationale before beginning feedings. An X ray is often obtained to check for placement. Aspirating stomach content and checking the pH for acidity is the best method of checking for placement. Other methods include placing the end in water and checking for bubbling, and injecting air and listening over the epigastric area. Answers B and C are not correct. Answer D is incorrect because warming in the microwave is contraindicated. Practice Exam 1 and Rationale 67Q. Select the stage of a pressure ulcer that is accurately pair with its characteristics. A stage I only slight blanching when pressure is applied to the skin. B stage 2 the epidermis and part of the dermis is damaged or lost. C stage 3 the wound has slough and eschar. D stage 4 the loss of skin usually exposes some fat rationale A stage 2 pressure ulcer damages the epidermis and part of the dermis. A stage I pressure ulcer remains intact and the skin doesn't briefly lighten or blanch when touched. A stage 3 pressure ulcer is a deep wound that can expose some fat. And a stage 4 pressure ulcer exposes bone, muscle and tendons. It is also characterized with slough and eschar. Q. The nurse is completing an assessment history of a client with pernicious anemia. Which complaint differentiates pernicious anemia from other 